Hello and welcome to a desk update. Actually, today it's a board update. So um, on my desk, I've piled up the boards that I've received in the mail today. So first up, <clears throat> this is what arrives here. It's the Fochi CCS controller. It comes here without the QCA chip and I then fitted the QCA chip and then found out some stuff doesn't work, but in general, it's good for establishing a charging session and charging your car. It's just some of the additional wake up circuitry that I dreamed up in the last release is not actually working. So, Fochi, um, I think, is now mature enough to put it uh, into the sh up in the shop as a an early early adopters edition. So, grab it there. And I've got to show you something. So, right now, if you order the controller, you get this one, the Deutscher, and you get this one, the enclosure. And I was going to supply you with all like uh, the Type A connector and the Type B connector, and then these pin locking plasticky things. And also the pins. But look at this. These are plastic. So I ordered the parts that you use to kind of seal off the unused pins. It's just two available right now, but we might cobble together some more. And then here's the BMS board, uh, just a tiny little update that doesn't even have a consequence yet. Uh, you can see a small um, uh, component has been added here. It's a low current uh, three volt regulator of the 12 volts and it powers what is called the backup domain so basically there's a couple of bytes of ram in here that are retained over over the boots so since this board is designed to be permanently supplied by 12 volt and then enabled whenever needed we use these permanent 12 volts just like two micrograms of them to store some non-volatile data like the last soc that we calculated and yeah we will see stuff useful stuff i think it's going to be useful um we shall see next up is uh, these two boards they should be quite familiar it's a tesla sdu drop-in logic board and you will see some more or less subtle differences this one's got some extra frames attached to it because it's being manufactured in what's called standard manufacturing or something at JLC PCB. Costs like 10 euros extra and it's necessary to, to choose this manufacturing method because of the ESP32 Wi-Fi module. Speaking of which, um, hmm, it's better than nothing, but... It doesn't only have friends out there. And uh, one of the most um, common reasons is because uh, this Wi-Fi module is buried in a MI-tight box. So the Wi-Fi is also some sort of MI and it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't get out of the box very well. So uh, yeah, you get frequent disconnects or restarts and yeah, weird stuff. And it's not very fun to use. And you have to go really close to your inverter to be able to do anything at all. So let's move the camera a bit over to this one. Um, here's one where I omitted the Wi-Fi module. And you can see it doesn't have all these support frames and it's being uh, populated in what's called economic PCBA. Yeah, because we don't populate this one. Now, the question is, how do we configure this? Um, <clears throat> I see a number of ways. One, you've got your RX and TX um, header there. So when you commission, or before you commission the drive unit, you could do all the configuration and then bury it in its enclosure and use it. Um, it's likely that you want to change parameters later on. So this might not be the most versatile method of doing it. Uh, yeah, speaking of which, you, you could connect either some external Wi-Fi module here or a USB to serial adapter. Um, another method to configure this is uh, with external ESP32 uh, module. 
that you can just mount anywhere in your car where you have CAN and 12 volts. And yes, it connects to the processor here via CAN and it can do all the usual stuff. It can do software or firmware upgrades. It can change parameters and plot values and what else is there? Oh, and do CAN mappings. Um, or you may also choose if you're the kind of guy who likes to use Vim to connect a CAN adapter to the CAN high and CAN low, also just somewhere in your car where you've got CAN, and then use um, a command line tool for writing the configuration variables and another command line tool for doing firmware upgrades. Yeah, so that's uh, all the options that you are now given in the shop. You can have this uh, without any Wi-Fi at all. You can have it with, well, as before, with the integrated Wi-Fi, or you can order this one in a bundle with that one for external Wi-Fi. Right, um, that's all I have for you today. There's more stuff coming. Um, I don't know, should I spoil it? Yeah, I mean, this is not some serious. Um, the Zoe inverter is down in my shed, so there will be a shed update about hacking the Zoe inverter, one way or another. Stay tuned, and thanks for watching this one. See you next time. Bye-bye.